government, which is why currently we're able to offer um, some free courses for you as, as short courses. And the finance course is one of them. And this is a, a one hour, what we call a taster, which is a one hour condensed webinar on finance related matters. And it gives you a chance to have a feel for what our course, which um, currently we're running as small business finance. And we have one more uh, iteration of that course happening uh, shortly. It's, it is advertised on Eventbrite. Our project is close to ending. So this is your last chance to actually do uh, the small business finance course from Nuba uh, starting in June, or, sorry, starting in May. I'd like to introduce Alan Griffiths, our facilitator for today and our finance expert. So over to you, Alan. Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Um, uh, and the apologies for dragging in on a kind of a nice sunny day. So hopefully I'll, you'll get something from this session. Um, uh, as you'd expect, it's a taster session. So I think hopefully uh, if you learn something or if you kind of are reminded of something you picked up in the past, well, that's great. But uh, I'm very happy to be kind of um, stopped, but uh, I, I'm short sighted. I've got one of these small computer screens that I'm not guaranteed to be seeing you. So if I'm rude enough to ignore you, just please shout a bit higher or, or wave. So uh, I'm new to this kind of virtual learning stuff. So uh, we'll probably cover everything in an hour um, easily. So uh, I'll, I'll just carry on. Um, OK, is that fine? OK. I'll Okay, so this gives a uh, sorry for the kind of I'm not expecting Alan. Yeah. I just wanted to say uh, we something the the big screen the small business finance is um, um, my software's kicking in. I'll close this. Finance, uh, as you, some of you may know, it's part of a kind of a, a myriad of kind of short courses that makes up the kind of the offer of the NUBA. I do the finance bit. Um, we've structured this latest version iteration of the course around the sad situation we found ourselves all in as business owners with regard to COVID. Hopefully everything will get better now. Um, the session I'm actually going to do today um, features on session four, really. It's the cash management session. Um, but this gives you, first slide gives you an, a, a kind of a, an idea of what cover we would take in about eight, eight hours of session. Um, first session is around um, the theory of accounts, why we create accounts for business owners. Um, Many of us have started a, a small business because we've had a good idea. Um, perhaps we've had been in paid employment and then we start a business uh, in parallel with that paid employment. So there are various reasons why people start a business. But I think the commonality between all of us is that we would like to kind of uh, grow a business, generate a profit and be successful. Um, Many of us will, will have heard some statistics that businesses fail within a certain amount of years, months. So this course really is giving you a grounding, very basic. It's, no, it's not in a, a course with a, a great deal of detail and depth, but most people who have undertaken this course feel that they've got enough information to go to a, a, another level um, and certainly have covered some all of the bases. So in session one, we would cover why we have accounts and uh, what's the difference between internal finance information. I'm a, a personal advocate of using the information perhaps we've created, uh, collected for external purposes, i.e. a VAT return, um, the accounts for the accountants to send to company's house, all of that information you're forced to, to, to generate, but I, I'm a firm believer that you've got data there that could give you some better business decision-making uh, tools. So throughout this course, we, we 
we, we cover the, that angle. Towards the second and third session, we will deal with um, how to create a profit and loss on a balance sheet. Um, we have some very um, straightforward accounting transactions to play with. So, and that's the best way to learn. That's how we found is that we do a few sessions of um, uh, what happens when you buy a car, do you put it in the balance sheet, do you put it in the profit loss, um, why is depreciation not really of concern in a profit and loss and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of stuff, little kind of snippets of information that will stimulate some thought and debate. Um, and that's, we've tried to keep it very relevant to those who are participating. So um, to, to make it as useful as it can be on this short course. So the, this taster session, as I said, will focus on this session four. Um, and the approach of the sessions is uh, try to be as interactive as we can. If we were in a classroom, we'd have whiteboards and we'd have uh, some sort of group work for, for, for groups of uh, two or three, each working on some, some particular aspects of finance. But we found that we've been able to cover a lot in this virtual world. Um, I do tend to use Excel. Most people find that Microsoft Excel is a handy tool to generate the basic sort of information and plans you would re require in a finance setting. So for this course, uh, we'll be offering you some Microsoft Excel templates, and I'll show you a few today that will give you a, a feel of, of what you get. Um, and you do get those. So when you've been on the course, you're free to download these Excel templates and use these templates as you, you wish. You, you don't have to use them, but they're there for you to use in your own businesses if you wish. Um, so usually I do tend to cover a, a, a technical sort of overview for some things, um, for a profit and loss, for a balance sheet, but also for cash management. Um, and I think that's important because you'll be dealing with people, other business owners, and also um, perhaps your accountant. So having a kind of a, a level of technical information knowledge behind the practicalities of knowing what profit and loss and balance sheets are, I think are quite important. Um, as I said in point three here, my aim is to try and help all attendees to improve or refresh their understanding, um, provide those attending with access to activities. These are the learning resources I've just talked about and the Excel templates. Um, small businesses are very good at, at kind of using what's best for themselves to succeed. Um, we discussed through the course that, you know, there's no one hat fits all. Um, somebody might be able in one business to spend more time and effort on the accounts whilst others have got very limited time to do that sort of stuff and may choose one of these really cool um, accounting software apps that are available now. So we discuss all of those kind of options for small businesses. Okay, so as part of this taster session on cash flow management, we're going to cover today uh, how important cash flow management is to your business. And I might kind of ask if some of you want to kind of share some of your uh, perceptions on cash management and experiences. I think that kind of means that uh, as, as business owners yourselves, you're able to kind of uh, share your knowledge. And that's usually how we do the, the sessions uh, in the finance course. Um, we'll look at the importance from an accounting aspect. Um, some of you may not have come across the need to do a cash flow statement. That's not a surprise because small businesses uh, don't have to do a cash flow statement. But as your business becomes bigger, grows, and becomes a larger company, that will become a requirement of a larger company. So having a, a kind of a, a knowledge of what a cash flow statement is that sits alongside a profit loss and a balance sheet 
is quite useful. Um, most of us have heard of, of the store of Timpsons. Um, uh, he has some links with North Wales. Uh, he used to have a property on the Menai Strait, but there's an interesting article going back to 2010 we'll look at as a case study today. Um, and that's the sort of thing we'll use on the course, things to kind of stimulate some debate and using the kind of views of people who have succeeded in business to share their thoughts rather than, you know, uh, that's the best way really to, to kind of use examples of success. Um, we are going to then kind of reflect on the benefits of a cash flow plan. Um, some people have asked me, well, what does a cash flow plan look like? And I remember when I started my business, the bank wanted to see a cash flow plan for the first 18 months. You might have had to have done the same if you were uh, going to a bank. Um, and, and we'll have a quick look at that. Um, I've created one on Excel spreadsheet. Um, and that will be, as I said, free on, for those on the course, they'll be able to take that away with them. Um, we, these cash flow plans can be linked to financial ratios. We'll look at financial ratios with regard to cash flow, but everything else, uh, and that will be kind of considered in the course. Um, cash burn rate ratio is something that we'll look at, the cash burn rate, very, very, topical recently uh, on the news people are were referring to this as how quickly they were unfortunately getting re, you know through their uh, reserves in the bank while their businesses were closed so unfortunately that has become very very kind of apt okay so how important is cash flow management to your business but so before i start does anybody want to kind of offer a a kind of uh, their own take on cash flow management. Okay, so the first thing to say is that when people or business in the sense of business talk about cash, they actually talk about cash and money in the bank account. So it's a kind of like a, a catch all term. So that's the first thing to point out. So it's all the, 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 the money that you have readily available uh, to, to, to spend within your business as you see fit uh, on foreseen or unforeseen uh, activities. Um, so what tools do you use to manage your cash in the business? Does, does everybody have a cash flow forecast or? No? Okay, so hopefully, you know, we, I might be able to kind of give you a, a, a kind of a reason to have a look at this as a, as a way of kind of managing uh, your cash moving forward in your business. I used to work uh, in, on, a, uh, in a, con on a contract basis for a local manufacturing company, um, and it was a big company, and the chairman had what he called the ready reckoner. And he knew what was going to happen based on the uh, cash in the bank. So with experience and knowledge of high season, low season, many business owners intuitively have a, an understanding of how good a year they're having based on the cash. What I think that I'm encouraging is the fact that with that intuition and experience, by putting that information on on some spreadsheets, very simple. You could start to create some data analysis and to be able to know uh, in any financial year or quarter or week or month, how ahead of schedule you are compared to previous years. So that's one of the benefits of cash flow forecasting. And some people have asked, well, how often should you review your cash flow forecast? Um, Monthly is a common sort of periodic cycle uh, because accounts are normally updated in a fairly big company or a small or medium company every month. Again, it depends on the business. It depends upon your businesses, how, how much time you have. Um, but I think that a, a month is a, is a nice sort of uh, a, a kind of a time period for, for which 
to refresh the, um, the information. For most people, when they start a business, especially a retail trading sort of business, that there is this kind of circulation of cash to stock and debtors. And on our last course, we had a useful debate about is having a lot of cash in your business good? Um, and some, somebody pointed out, well, yes, within reason, because obviously if you have a lot of cash in the bank sitting there earning next to nothing interest, you could have been buying stock or to, to create sales to hopefully generate profit. So uh, for people who perhaps are working in the bu building trade, if they have cash, they might decide to buy property to, to, to kind of diversify, to make sure that that kind of asset is generating kind of re um, rental income. So farmers, were, they're all encouraged to diversify. This is about using that cash in an intelligent way to generate more kind of stock, debtors, cash and sales. Do you, you see, so whilst cash is good, high level cash reserves in your bank is obviously necessary to cover, cover the un, unforeseen and foreseen costs. Having too much cash in a bank doing nothing isn't usually uh, seen as a, a good way to uh, run a profitable business. But, the, but everybody has a different view on that. Okay, so from a, in a, a technical accounting point of view, as I mentioned before, many larger businesses are required to do a cash flow statement. M many businesses know about the profit loss and the balance sheet, but cash flow, statements of cash flow is usually um, kind of uh, done by the accountants and not really understood by many. However, there are, I'm going to suggest that small business owners need to know about this. And I'm going to suggest one way on the course that one reason why you would want to do a cash flow statement. Um, small businesses, as I said, they're not required to do complete a, a cash flow, uh, but they are key because what they do do in a, in a business is they split the profit, and hopefully there is a profit, between operating, investing, and trading activities. So many businesses, large businesses, as I suggest, start to trade on shares and stocks and things like that. So um, it's important for, for people who are doing analysis on a business to actually know, has the profit been generating from the, the core business in hand? Um, so this is a, a kind of useful uh, in many ways for businesses that may have opportunity to buy a similar business. Um, so if you're a, for example, a, a, a shop who's offered to buy another shop, a competitor, because they're retiring, um, you might want as part of the due diligence to make sure that the profit that was generated was from that core activity and not from you know, the sale um, of some land or the sale of property or other things. So these sorts of ideas, uh, concepts are important for, for you to be aware of. Okay, so as I mentioned, in, as part of the course, we do do kind of um, case studies. And I will ask the group virtually to, as I'm gonna ask you to do now, to spend just a couple of minutes to read this text in the gray area. Um, and then what we do on the course is as a group, we all kind of have time to answer these questions. We won't do this, we haven't got time to do this properly today, but this gives you a, a feel of what will happen on the course. Okay, so I'll give you a few minutes to kind of just go through that now. Okay, I'm sure that 
And we will, as I said, we'll leave these to the course proper. But what struck me um, when I read this, and what the reason why I've included it in this, is the fact that the chair, the owner of this business, was still creating, you know, using cash. And for many businesses, um, you know, have a large IT and finance department like Timson's has, you know, he knew the benefits of having this robust finance department, but he also knew that it would take them six weeks to give him the information he wanted now. Okay, so I think it's, he's not suggesting he sacks this team. What he's saying is that as a business owner, as the chair of this business, who that's what he became, he had to know on a daily basis what his position was, okay? I think also, as I know, that Timson's is a very much a cash business, isn't it? Because I'm sure that it, there's a lot of cash changing hands in, in the outlets that they have. Um, and that's an additional reason why I'm sure he was interested in cash. He also knew on different weeks of the year how much cash should have gone through the tills and how much cash should his hundreds of outlets generate. So I just think it's interesting for us all to kind of think that it's a matter how big or automated we become, it's kind of there is a kind of place for a, a ready reckoner, a cash position. Um, so you can spot where things don't feel right okay you don't have to wait till the end of the vat quarter or the end of the the, the month or whatever um in our last course we had a somebody who who ran a, a a retail outlet and she explained how she does obviously do something similar to this she kind of knows how much trade she do on a monday tuesday wednesday and that kind of thing so this knowledge you will have of your own businesses in a cash and bank sense is really key, okay? You don't have to listen, uh, wait till the end of the, the year for the profit and loss, okay? So um, what are the benefits of having a cash flow plan for your business? In this part of the world, in Northwest Wales, a lot of our businesses are seasonal. Uh, tourism is strong here. Um, and linked to the tourism, retail gets stronger in the summer months when the tourists come back. Um, so seasonality is a big kind of uh, local uh, issue. For farming as well, seasonality is key with obviously the, 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 uh, the, the seasons. So cash flow plan is key in a seasonal business. So you can plan for big expenditure, foreseen like tax pay, uh, payments and also unforeseen uh, uh, you know a kind of re repla replacing a broken piece big piece of equipment or whatever so a cash flow plan will give you the ability to to make finance decisions with confidence knowing the outlook for the coming uh, year based on those big spends or big income. You know, you could be getting a, a, a fortuitous uh, income sale that you weren't planning. Um, as John Simpson did, he used the cash position as his ready reckoner of managing his extremely large business. So you're the best people to know um, about your businesses. Um, Many of us will have accounting packages. Uh, zero is one, Sage of, you know, is another. Your accountants, if you have accountants, will also give you advice of which packages are good for running your business. And some businesses, uh, you're more suited to some packages. Um, however, I, I do feel that having some extra pieces of information that you create yourself on Excel can have its benefits because you get under the bonnet of the, of, of the accounts. You kind of look at the figures and are able to kind of see uh, what perhaps uh, that kind of um, phone app is capturing. Um, ha putting everything to one side in, in a software package has its benefits, obviously, with time saving, but does have its uh, 
challenges as well because you want to get under the bonnet of the figures and know what, what the data is. Okay, so what does a cash flow plan? So on the course, there's a made up golf course here um, and from this you'll spot that I'm a golfer. Uh, please don't hold that against me. Um, this was a, a, a kind of a, a, a cash flow plan made up to suggest every month has a, a likely income and expenditure associated to different departments. So if you're if you've got different sort of departments in your business or or perhaps what they call cost centers or divisions in your in your business, you could split those up. Um, this is a summary uh, that I can go, I think I could go to uh, the cash flow plan. Yeah. So this is the actual cash flow plan on an Excel. And you can obviously change these as you wish. And the figures down below will change as well, as you'd expect. If you want more detail, you could put all the detail here and it's, as you'd expect, the summary changes automatically. Now, I would argue, and you know, correct me if you don't agree, um, when you do accounts and these packages, they're always very good and accurate at telling you how, why you are making a profit or loss. I think for many businesses, the challenge is to predict the profit and loss. And I think a cash flow plan is a good way to realistically give you a sense of what sort of profit you should expect with, with, a, a, with what you believe are, are, are realistic assumptions on income and cost. Okay, so during the course, we talk about the, you know, should you do a worst case scenario, a realistic scenario, or a heroic scenario on the cash flow. Um, and, you know, if we, God forbid, had another sort of, um, you know, a, a kind of a lockdown, I'll just show you here. Um, if we had another lockdown, um, and this kind of 90,000 went to zero, This would show, you know, this would automatically change. And then our, our position, our overdraft position would go from a 50,000 or so profit to 50,000 uh, loss. So these are the sort of tools that, you know, you could pick up from us and use if you wish. So that's a cash flow plan. Now that you've seen that, do, do people have something similar? No? Yeah. So, you know, what what people are often kind of remember somebody asking me, they had a, a cash book, an actual book. I didn't have an Excel. And they said, should I train to do Excel? And I said to them, use what suits you. You know, that back of an envelope can be useful to some businesses if that's what they use and it's served them well. But all I'd say is always try and explore or new opportunities if you have a time. So if you want to have a look at this Excel, um, and if you feel it, you could trial it for a year, you might find that it helps you with confidence, pay that tax bill, or, or spend on a piece of equipment knowing that your financial position moving forward will be healthy. Okay, so if I close that down, so, it's no, it's no surprise that banks offer it when you start to trade with them. And when you ask for a new loan, they might ask for more information like this. I would probably think that if you're going to a big expansion in the business, however successful you are, the banks will probably like to know that you have this level of control or view of your future finances moving forward. Okay, so um, we're in the last few kind of 10 minutes of our session today. Um, another area that we'll look at, and this is in session three, is uh, financial ratios. 
Now, I clicked on the actual uh, example we use. Now, we deal with a fictitious company, and I'm sorry it's so small, um, but there are 20 or so ratios we, we cover quickly here uh, in the course. Um, most, most companies only want about six ratios relevant to them. But what we do on the course, uh, I, I tell you, well, these how, how we do the ratios. I give you the definitions. And then as a group on a course, you're encouraged to work out what these ratios are, profitability, working capital, liquidity, all of these solvency ratios as well. And they will tell you by if I put here, I'll show you how I do this now. If I put 165 there, um, and we even kind of, as you can spot, made it easier. We, we've colored the cells in. And they work out the ratios at the bottom. Okay, so this is the best way to learn about ratios because most individuals, including myself, will probably fall asleep if we were to look at ratios, but by actually put it, putting in the kind of figures in and debating them, we can start to kind of have an understanding of what they're trying to tell us, okay? So what we do in the course as well is we encourage people to do, to embed that learning, because the best way to learn is to, to embed that learning on something, on an activity. and. A bit of effort we, we 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 would encourage you then a complete um if you like empty version of this to put your own figures of your own business in these spreadsheets and then hey presto you've got your own financial ratios um because this is an excel spreadsheet that you get obviously then this is for you to use forever more moving forward um it's not rocket science but it it probably will save you a few hours and, uh, uh, and it's been structured in a way that's supposed to make things easier for you. Because um, the most small business owners always want to do these things, but they find it difficult to find time to be able to kind of do these things. Okay, so we kind of, I get that because I've been in the same position as you. Okay, so in the intro, I mentioned one of the ratios this were, has been very kind of talked about a lot recently is cash burn rate. So this gives you a, these next few slides gives you this technical, re, uh, and I'll read through these because uh, it'll make it very, very clear what it is. This technical um, kind of introduction supported by some simple calculations makes this ratio a very easy one to understand. A cash burn rate is a simple definition of cash burn rate is how fast a company spends available cash. How long will the cash we have today last? Okay. Burn rates are commonly used by early stage companies. So owners, investors know how long the cash they put into a company will last. So if, if it's a startup company like this is suggesting, and many IT companies are like this, have to invest a lot in, in IT equipment and software design, uh, knowing that the, the, what they're producing will not generate income for perhaps years. So the cash burn rate is really, really important in those sorts of businesses. But unfortunately for more traditional businesses, um, this ratio has also been of use um, because when shops are closed, when stores are closed, when people are forced not to trade, um, some costs still are incurred and therefore cash is burnt. Okay. There are two sorts of burn rates, a gross cash burn rate, the total amount of cash you are spending per month. This is your worst case scenario and is calculated to assuming no revenue. Um, coming in, use the calculation if future revenue is not guaranteed. So over the last few decades, if you've gone to an accounting college or university, most professors or, or, or kind of lecturers probably wouldn't said that 
Section A is useful because it's not realistic. But unfortunately, the, what we've seen recently, this is the situation we've been in, no revenue. But the net, net cash burn rate is something you can now use forevermore. And that's the difference between cash in and cash out per month. So even in a downturn in a market that's not very good for you, um, this will give you, um, even if the revenues are lower than you'd expect, you, this will allow you to forecast how long that cash you have with these uh, lower levels of income will, will allow you to survive. Okay, And this example demonstrates this. So a small business has just reviewed its latest cash flow plan and it expects spend of five thousand in Feb, six in March, seven thousand in April. So surprise, surprise, it's eighteen thousand divided by three. This gives you six thousand pounds per month average spend. The business has thirty seven thirty two thousand, sorry, thousand in its bank account. And so simple maths means that that 32,000 is likely to last about five months. So, you know, you can imagine a year or so ago, uh, people worried about how long their reserves would last. Yes, the governments were giving um, some incentives and some grants and loans, but this could have, you know, can be useful in those sorts of scenarios. Perhaps a more realistic one and useful one, I think, though, is the net cash burn rate. Um, so if you expect in this sort of uh, tentative period of trading, lower levels of income, you can still see that with that £32,000 in the bank, plus with this slow sort of income assumptions coming into your business, if you netted the cost against the uh, income, that kind of net, net cost of a thousand pound will last you 32 months. Okay, so these sorts of metrics can be useful, but you might say, well, they're not that useful to me, but knowing that, you know, with your current cash flow planning, that your business can survive 32,000 months without having a loan, can be useful you know it, it can can mean that businesses uh don't worry about things they shouldn't worry about um so this is what we discuss in our course we we kind of and, and some people say well that's not you no use to me um some people say that would be great for me so it's we all kind of take bits of what we discuss and use some bits hopefully there'll be some bits on the course that are useful to everybody. Okay, so um, that's all I was planning to do today, but obviously I'm happy to take any queries and through those queries, perhaps I'll be able to fill in some gaps that uh, uh, in, in my discussion today. Um, Alan, if you wanted to do the full course, um, do you have to, is that is that free or do you have to pay for it? Or what's the process? How do you access it? Uh, it depends upon Shall where you're that? based. Leslie? Okay. You, you started, okay, go on. <laughs> do you want to explain, Leslie, how it works? Okay, okay. yeah. Um, you need to be a business in Northwest Wales to, to be eligible uh, as a company to be eligible for it. And then the participants need to be employed by that company. So you might be that um, you, you are a sole trader, that's fine. Just something that shows that you are connected with that business. Um, and the courses are free currently, they're fully funded. So yeah. Great. So what if you just, so I'm a startup, so I've got the link to this through the Enterprise Hub. So right. what if you start up, would you need to be an established business? The, um, we are taking startups. Uh, um, what, the way that the project's funded, we have targets 
to actually go for. So we might find that uh, sometimes some of the ones that we've actually let come on the course might not count towards our target, but we know we're in the end. So we're here to help you. So if you're in a startup and you've actually started doing something, if you've got a Facebook site or a website that you've done, or you've got business cards that you're using, then you can use those or if you've registered your company or registered as a sole trader, then that, that will suffice for it. Whereabouts are you based? Um, in Conway, um, yeah. okay. Chadford. So uh, Kelly can send you the documentation to go through um, and the dates of when the course is running so that you've got that information and then she can help you fill in those forms. Yeah, okay, I haven't got any of those things as yet because I'm still doing the business planning and that. So, uh, well, we'll see, we'll see anyway. Yeah, Ke Kelly and I can yeah. have a conversation. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. send me an email and we can have a chat? I'll let you know all about it. Yeah, do you, can you post your email in the chat? Yeah, please. Course, I'll do that now. Thanks. Okay, yes, so it's... Uh, any more questions from anybody? I, th I think the feedback, if I'm honest, it's very difficult. It's a, you know, I'm an accountant myself. It can be a very dry subject because, so I wouldn't describe this as an exciting course, but what you do get is some Excel spreadsheets and some open and frank discussion about the things to look at, things not to worry about. Um, and I think the feedback we've had on previous courses is it's at the right level. Um, so it's, it's certainly not, you know, any small business owner will, you know, by the fact they're kind of exploring business and, and trying to generate a profit, a lot of this will be intuitive. Um, it's two hour sessions and that's about enough because you know, after two hours of listening to me, I think you're ready for a break. <laughs> okay, yeah, Alan, Alan always uh, undervalues himself. I'll just read you the feedback we got from one of the people that was on the course has just finished. And this person says, the course has been a fantastic learning opportunity and provided a lot of useful information over a short period. I have gained more financial information and learning from the four sessions than I expected. Therefore, the course has exceeded my experience, my expectations. Um, and you know, the course facilitator has been excellent, providing practical examples, interacting to, to measure understanding and answering questions uh, with different business owner structures. So Alan is, is actually, he's, what we try to do with all of the NUBA courses is to flex to what the group who are attending need. So uh, it actually results in slight, slight difference conversations on each course. It's not just here's an academic program, sit there and listen. Yeah. It actually is driven by the needs of the group and the conversations of the group and the example that the groups bring to the courses. And, and one of the on the first few days, we I tried to explain um, why the, there's a link between the balance sheet and the profit and loss and the accounting equation. And then we talked about equity and what the business owns you. So a lot of these things, I, I guarantee you, your accountants will be talking to you over the years. And I, I remember you know, some things go over my head, you know, that accountants are experts in their field. So I think what I try to do is make sure that as small business owners, you're ready for these sorts of references to equity. Um, you know, when they talk about non-current assets, they're talking about fixtures and fittings and plants. So I even cover the old school terminology with the new school terminology, because, um, I'm an accountant, so I see. I sometimes think that professionals want to, you know, not lose people, but want to show what they know. So I tried to kind of open up a few sort of myths about uh, what you should be doing on these courses, uh, what to worry about, what not to worry about. 
Okay. Well, hopefully I've explained enough so that you certainly have a look at it and I'll look forward to seeing you on the course um, in a, f a few weeks time if, if it suits you with the timing. Thank you everybody.